Hi, I'm Gavin, and these are the Coffee Conspiracies. If you take starting a business seriously, and you're open to moving to a place that will satisfy not only your desire to start that business, but also which offers the best returns for your time, money, and initiative, how should you go about investigating where to go? In this episode, I'm going to take you through some of the data and analysis I look at when I'm evaluating business sites, as well as the broader implications that this analysis has for economic development in general. For starters, we need a benchmark. What does a typical business look like in the UK? And let's ignore for the moment the incredible range of businesses that exist. That's what the other episodes in this series are all about, where I go on site visits. For now, we're just going to look at the average. These are the rolling hills of England, and this is a typical business. Floor area, 370 odd meters squared, 12 employees, total employee pay of about 320,000 pounds, rent, 33,000 pounds, revenue of about 2 million, and profit margin of 8.1%. That's the average for the whole of England and Wales. And we'll use that as our average in terms of looking at other areas and seeing how they compare. Are they better? Are they worse? And what is the way to even evaluate what does better or worse even mean? If investing in new businesses were simply a matter of finding a place where costs are low and profits high, then life would be relatively straightforward. We would look for some sort of measure of our costs and something else for our returns. We'd compare everything everywhere to this and look at places somewhere in the UK that showed a better return than this average. A simple measure of costs is labor market efficiency. And the most basic way to present that is as the ratio between wages and business revenue. What that means is for every one pound in wages, what is the most you can expect back in revenue returns? This is a way of normalizing our wage rates. A person who is paid far more in one place should also earn the company they work for far more. If they don't, then they're not as efficient. And if you compare these ratios to the potential profit we could earn all across all 349 local authorities in England and Wales, we get a scatter plot of all the places you consider to start your business. Most places seem to cluster around about £6.20 return for every £1 in wages, about 8% profit. That's also close to the rule of thumb used in hiring new staff. Sales staff are somewhat different, since you'd usually look for about a 10 to 1 ratio. And you can see I've highlighted the extremes in red and green, and a slight orange tone for two places that are similar to each other in the middle. I haven't picked those two randomly, but I'm not going to tell you what they are just yet. All these data are available uh, via the link in the uh, bottom below the video, and uh, you'll be able to get the raw data as well as all these charts. Besides wages, rent is your other big commitment. Another measure of returns is the ratio of rent to wages. It would be great to maximize that value I can get out of any commercial property by keeping this ratio as low as I can. If I plot the rental ratio against efficiency, I get this chart. Notice my two orange blobs are actually on top of each other here. They must be really similar areas. And from an investor's perspective, it looks like a wash as to which place you might decide to choose. This is efficiency versus actual rent. And now you can see the difference. The first area is amongst the cheapest places to rent in the UK, while the second is amongst its high cost outliers. Taking that back to actual wages versus efficiency, the difference is even greater. The first is an area receiving the lowest wages in the country, while the second has the second highest wages. Yet the investment returns still appear similar. How did this happen? This is Rortenstall in Rosendale, an area that appears picturesque, and with employment at 73%, is only slightly behind the 74% for the entire country. And look at that rent, it's less than half the national average for a floor area that's slightly larger. This is Canary Wharf in Tower Hamlets one of the wealthiest places in the world. You can see how rent is so much more expensive in Canary Wharf that employees are squeezed together at 17 meters squared each, whereas with those lower rentals in Rottenstall, employees get this generous 34 meters squared each, twice the space. Yet the generosity ends there. Average wages in Canary Wharf are almost four times higher. Yet despite this, efficiency is about the same. One pound in wages in Rortenstall yields the same revenue and profit return as in Canary Wharf, about six pounds and nine percent. For an individual entrepreneur, which place you go is largely a factor of what you want in life. Do you want hill walks, mountain biking, lots of space, and a relatively relaxed lifestyle? Maybe you'd consider Rortenstall. 
Do you want a vibrant international city filled with restaurants, museums, theatres, nightclubs? Then maybe Tower Hamlets. They're four hours apart, but they're in completely different countries. If you were only interested in returns on your investment, you'd look to your wallet. See what you can afford and invest like that. If you want to know more about why these places are different and what could be done to increase wages and social opportunities, well, this is where we run headlong into the politics of economic development. Could Rautenstall ever be like Canary Wharf? At the moment, spending £18,000 on wages in Rautenstall gets you revenue of £108,000. If you increase those wages fourfold so that they're the same as uh, in Canary Wharf, would you get a linear increase in revenue? Would a salary of £72,000 in Rautenstall yield £432,000? What do you think? Could it be done? And now we need a new word, productivity, which is the relationship between increased investment and increased output. If you get increased output, then all is well. But if not, what you've got is inflation. Let's start with a simple Google search for breakfast. Here's what you can get in Rotten Store. This is Canary Wharf. Maybe you think this is an unfair comparison, but could your chef in Rosendale produce a fresh hollandaise sauce? And if they could, would there be a market for it? If you wanted to start an IT consulting firm, would you start it in Tower Hamlets or Rosendale? Where could you recruit the people you need? And that's the difference in productivity. People can be equally efficient at converting cash into revenue, but they may not be equally productive. At some point, you reach an upper limit. When you start a business, your business, you're not thinking about these things. Your interest is immediate. It's confined to your resources, the cash you have, your family's needs, where your friends are. For an investor, you simply go where you get the best return. But for a town and its people who need to attract investors, they also need to produce an environment conducive to attracting your money. But neither Rosendale nor Tower Hamlets are static either. Productive people go to where productivity will be best rewarded. Given this marked difference in earning power in Tower Hamlets, what numbers could we look at to see the impact in Rosendale? Demography. Rosendale has a median age of 40 and its population is shrinking. Whereas Tower Hamlets is 29 as the median and the population is growing. Towns seeking economic development are seeking investment. An investment is a function of mobility, migration and youth. With 46% of people in Tower Hamlets being immigrants, it's certainly a place aligned with a desire for mobility, migration and youth. Rosendale, with only 7% immigrants, may not be. At which point, how these regions market themselves to entrepreneurs, to you, becomes really important. Here's Rosendale's effort versus London's. They're both okay as far as the state of the art in 2017 is concerned, but what do they tell me? And what would you want from a regional business advice website? My top requirements are where to go, what business properties are available to rent, and what they cost, what businesses might be available to buy, where I can apply for finance, and whether there are any market access opportunities for new businesses. I also want to know about any regulatory or legal compliance issues. Make it easy for me to arrange anything I need in one place. And if you could tell me a little bit about what it's like to live in that area, that would be absolutely tremendous. I wouldn't be particularly interested in mentorship, unless that was the only way to get money, and I don't want to be smothered by anyone wanting to treat me as some sort of photo opportunity. Without getting too deep into the weeds here, how do these two sites stack up? Well, for starters, there's an awful lot of reading, and I got bored. Sorry. I did like the London Small Business Centre placing finance and workspace front and centre. That was helpful. Although not everyone wants a workspace, so I couldn't find much for my new coffee shop. Boost Lancashire was a bit terrible. Lots of events and people wanting to start conversations with me. And yeah, this is unfair, and of course I am biased. All I want is to sell subscriptions to Pikaia so people can find their own businesses. I mean, I'm not a charity. If I wanted to do something purely for my own entertainment, I'd be drinking coffee. But I digress. What would a good business advice website look like? Well, think tourism. Here's how Rosendale promotes tourism in their area. Look at all that info. What would happen if business development was treated more like tourism? I mean, what are entrepreneurs except tourists who came to stay? Looking at these places purely as an economist, 
it's easy to understand why these two different places end up with the societies they did. It is even easy to offer prescriptive advice to Rosendale about what they can do to be more like Tower Hamlets. The problem is that simply building lots of tall office blocks won't achieve it. Neither will massively increasing wages. Economic development is a combination of social attitude, long-term investment in education, and that's not that easy to implement. High growth startups are the prize you win for getting the basics right. So as I end this somewhat digressive discussion of economic development, I want to leave you with this. I did not visit either of these places to research this. The data I put together took significantly less time to assemble than filming this and editing this video. There aren't even that many numbers to consider. All the important ones are available after a few seconds of searching in Pikaya. Twig. From an entrepreneur's perspective, finding where to invest your carefully saved money is relatively straightforward. From a local authority's perspective, knowing the type of entrepreneurs you need to attract is similarly straightforward. As an entrepreneur, the hidden stuff is of how you choose where to start is unimportant. As long as it works, and as long as you're happy, all is well. For the places hoping to attract you, understanding the best way to do so is a matter of critical importance, and I don't believe they're doing a very good job of it. Thanks for listening, and now, let's go get some coffee. <laughs>